Hi, everybody. Welcome to the studio. I'm in a little different spot today because I've got some this coming week. I thought I would. Oh, it says my connection is unstable. Well, hopefully that gets resolved because I really have some fun things to show you. So welcome to the studio, everybody. Right hand side. So if you're watching and there's something going wonky with it, feel free to put something here in the comments and we'll see what we'll see what we can do about it. Hopefully this records just fine. And if not, I'll do another take. But every week I try to go live here in the studio to just chat with you about what's happening in all of our different classes that we're doing. This is this is for our parents that, you know, you have, you have kids that come here and you're like, what do they even do in art class every week? So here you go. We're going to tell you. I've got my post-it notes all lined up across the front. We're going to talk about drawing classes, sewing classes, fundamental classes, the multimedia classes, which is what we're going to demo today. And then at the very end of this, I've got a whole bunch of housekeeping stuff because, <coughs> excuse me, as we hit... Um, the holiday season and all the things that go along with it. There's a lot of communication that has to happen between us and you guys. So bear with me here. And um, when we get the recording up here, we'll put the timestamps in the comments. So if you're catching the recording, check out the comments in the description section of this video, and you should be able to see um, where in the video you can jump to, to just get the information that you want. All right. So let's start with our drawing classes. We have three different drawing classes. We have drawing 101, Drawing 102 realistic and then drawing 102 for comic and anime. So our drawing 101 classes and our drawing 102 advanced realistic classes will have the same invitation this week, which means the prompt that we give them, um, the, the setup that we give them will be the same. Obviously, what they're trying to achieve and accomplish from a 101 class to a 102 class is very, very different. But the prompt is the same and it is the week of Thanksgiving or the week before Thanksgiving. So we are setting a Thanksgiving table for them and they will be drawing that from observation. So it becomes a still life. We've got a place setting. Um, you know, maybe they zoom in on just the fork and the, you know, edge of the plate, you know, and use a viewfinder to, to do that composition. Maybe they zoom out and do the table in its entirety. Maybe they choose, um, you know, a bird's eye view. So, so they'll have to decide what their composition is going to be and then use what they're seeing to make their drawings. So this is an exercise in observation and still life. So that's what our, our 101s and our 102 Advanced Realistic will be doing. Our anime class, they did hands last week. So they're going to be doing feet this week as well as footwear because a lot of times we're not drawing barefoot people. Right. We're usually wearing shoes. And so they'll be doing a lot of footwear, different types of footwear, different angles that we can draw feet at. Right. Whether they're coming right at you and you got the bottom, whether you're seeing them from the top, whether you're seeing them, you know, straight on. So all sorts of fun, different angles that we can do for feet and, and footwear. So that's our comic and anime drawing class. First post-it note done. Let's do the next one. So our fundamentals classes. So these are our preschoolers from three to fives. You guys have your last class before Thanksgiving. So we're wrapping up our month for our preschoolers. Um, they're going to be finishing those Sumi Ink self-portraits that they started in week one. Last week, they added patterns with them with Sharpies. And at the end, at this week, they're going to be adding color. And we're going to use our chalk pastels and add color to our portraits. And you'll get to send those home. So you'll get to see those if you haven't already. We're also going to be diving back into the world of Matisse. So we have an artist every month. We did Mondrian last month and we did Kandinsky the month before. So this, this month has been all about Matisse. And we focus the last two weeks a lot on the patterns that Matisse uses when he paints. This coming week, we're going to look at some of Matisse's later arts and um, later artworks. He did not paint. He did collage. He did cutting and pasting and he called it painting with scissors. So we're going to be doing some of the same. We're going to read Eric Carle's books. Um, I think Brown Bear, Brown Bear is the book we're going to use. And the reason we choose Eric Carle is because Eric Carle also used collage and painting with scissors to make his illustrations. So the kids will get to use um, texture tools to make painted papers and then use painted papers to also make collages um, in this week's class. And that wraps up our week of fundamentals and um, then we're ready for December. Sewing class, remember last week I told you I would bring sewing stuff, I brought it, ready? Our sewing classes have been making art aprons or cooking aprons. I just grabbed the top one out of the closet um, and they've got there's almost completely done. You can see they've um, they've attached a pocket to it. They've got the, the front panel done. They've also had to make all of their own ties and webbings from our, our canvas broadcloth. And so those are done and everything just needs to be put together. In addition um, to that, this month, they're also doing some block printing on their fabric. And we've got these beautiful woodcut 
stamps. So they're made out of wood um, and they will choose, they're all different. They will choose theirs and then um, kind of similar to the pattern theme that's going on everywhere else in the studio, it will make a pattern on their apron. That's one reason why we chose a very um, flat canvas fabric was so that they could make their own patterns. And so that's what they'll be doing this week as opposed to getting it. And, and in addition to getting it all put together for their aprons. So that's my sewing class. Let's talk multimedia. Multimedia classes have been doing ink all month. I brought our example one. This is the example one that you've probably seen on some of the social media accounts. This is, um, this is my little froggy that I made a couple years ago. And he is filled with pattern and um, we call them a Zen tangle. It's just the style of drawing um, that we've got going on and the pattern that's happened. And you can see he is black and white and then he's got all this abstract color around him. And if you've tuned into the last couple of videos, I told you that that abstract color is not on the drawing itself. The abstract color is all is on the glass of our frame. So I'm going to open up this frame. And I'm going to show you what the glass looks like. So there's the there's the froggy. See, he's just black and white. I'm going to very carefully take out this piece of glass. Gently. Show you what the glass looks like. So see the glass has all the ink on it. It almost looks wet. Let's see if I can find a just a white sheet of paper. It looks like it's got like oh, but it's completely dry. Um, and the the frame is painted with alcohol inks. Not really focused on anything here. Come on, camera, focus on me. <laughs> okay, so our kids have been working for the last two weeks on their Zentangles, on their ink designs. And I'm gonna gently put this piece of glass back in the frame while I'm talking to you so that I don't break it. Um, so they've been working on the, the Zentangles. Our younger ones have done a, a geometric circle design and I brought a couple examples to show you. Let me slide this little froggy over here. So they have printed their circles using ink and now they are filling in the different patterns. So these are like our second and third graders. Um, we don't give them a whole, like obviously they still have a choice of composition, but they're not having to also figure out a subject because the objective for this lesson is the pattern itself. So, so we give them something very simple and that way they can focus on the pattern. Our older kids, we give them pretty much free reign to do any animal subject that they want. And so they actually had to figure out how to draw their animal and how to divide it into different sections. And they have also been filling theirs with different patterns. So some are further along than others. They work on their, their composition. Okay. It's always a really par important part of our studio that there are opportunities for our artists to pick their subject and to troubleshoot their composition, that all the answers are not given to them, right? So we do try to narrow the focus just because it makes the teaching easier, but we want to give them lots of opportunity to, to make decisions because that's what art is. It's just, you know, opportunities to make decisions. So they have worked on their Zentangles and this week, a lot of them are done with their Zentangles. This week they will be painting the glass. So these are, these are frames. Typically I get frames from the dollar store. Um, I'm sure people have heard that sourcing things is um, tricky right now. And so I actually bought these from Amazon, which means that they're, they're a little higher quality than we usually get. So the, kid, uh, the team came in yesterday and we unpacked all the boxes and counted them all out. Some of them are kind of in this matte silver. Some are in a natural wood. Um, we have others that are, that are like white. So we have all different colors because I couldn't get enough of one color, but that's okay. Good to have choices. Um, and this week they're going to be working on putting that color onto this clear pane of glass. So that way we can lay their artwork into the frame and it'll have color on top of it. So I want to show you the process that we're going to do. I'm going to actually tip my camera down so that you can see my table and then um, all the excitement that comes with it. So I've taken my frame apart and I just have my glass. There's two different, well, all of the classes they're doing this too. K1, second, third, fourth, fifth, middle school, high school. All of the multimedia classes are doing the exact same thing to their frames by adding um, color to them. Let me tip this down. Younger kiddos will probably be doing it with Sharpie markers. Our older kiddos will be doing it 
with um, alcohol inks. So it works the same. It's just, um, you know, one works better with the younger kids. I'm going to use aluminum foil to protect my surface here. In the classes, when we do this step, we actually have um, a, like a 9 by 13 foil pan that we put it in. But if I do that, then you can't see because it has a, a front lip on it. So I'm just going to use the foil. I'm going to move my my mouse out of the way. And you, can, you can't really see it on camera, but here's my glass right here. Now, these are what alcohol inks look like. Um, and they do stain. You can see I already have some on my fingers. Um, I am not going to use those on the video today. I'm actually going to use the Sharpies because it works it works just as good. Um, some of your kids using alcohol inks um, will come home with stained fingers. We'll probably wear some gloves, but just be aware of that. Um, it wears off just like um, <laughs> just like East Dying Easter eggs does. Now, our ones that are going to use the Sharpie markers, we will have them put patchworks of different color all over their glass. Now, the goal is to get as much ink down on the glass as you know, as you really can out of the marker. And so we don't want to do just, you know, scribbles because that doesn't put down pools of, of ink. And they'll get to pick all their colors. We've got so many different Sharpies. They get to pick any colors that they want to go in here. They also um, will want to have a, a little bit of a lesson in color theory because some colors play nicely together and well, some colors don't, right? So if I take this purple and I put yellow with it, um, we might end up with a little bit of a brownish color. Um, let's see. I'm going to kind of go with kind of my blues and my teals and my pinks. We don't have to color the whole frame. Um, and we also tell the kids that it doesn't really matter. Like, don't draw a picture on here. Because as soon as I get all the ink down, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put get this whole thing wet with isopropyl alcohol. And we're going to let it lift the ink off and swirl it all around. Now, our kids that are doing the alcohol inks, they might, um, they'll actually use like a dropper and drop their um, wet ink onto the, onto the glass. So the problem we have with the younger kids and the ink is um, more is more. They don't always understand that they can't, you know, if they put too much, then it ends up um, almost sticky and chunky on the glass. So, you know, they only get to put a couple drops when they do the ink. But when you color with Sharpies, you can, you know, you can lay it all down there. I'm going to put some orange here, which is risky, right? Because orange and blue do not usually play together, but they'll turn brown. That's okay. A couple more, and I think I'll be all done, and we'll get on to the the fun part here. Let's put some green up here in this corner and see what happens. The cool thing about this is if we, if you finish it and you're like, oh, I don't like the way it looks, it all wipes off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So, okay. So here, let's make this swirl up together, shall we? Here's my, here's my isopropyl alcohol. So we'll take our dropper. We're just going to cover our our glass. We're going to try to keep it all on the glass. We don't want to get it to pour off over the sides. You'll notice I didn't color all the way to the edge for that reason. Put it all over. Drop, drop, drop. And the Sharpie marker turns to kind of a, a liquid ink and it touches the isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%. Uh, we found that that works better than like a, a 70 or something percent. And see my colors start to swirl together. Now the kids will get the option. You can use a little bit of gravity, right? So they can, they can actually pick up the tin and, and tip it a little bit. You can also come down really low and use your mouth and blow. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because it's all going to swirl around when we do the next step. Now, for safety reasons, this next step that we're going to do is a teacher job. The kids will not have any part in it except for that they get to watch it. So there is a zone set up. 
They are nowhere near the table. I want to assure you when this is happening, they are far away from it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to light this isopropyl alcohol on fire. Um, and it is done on a table where you can see I moved all the alcohol off. I moved all the isopropyl alcohol, all the alcohol inks off. Anything that's flammable um, is removed from the table. This is the third year that we've done this. We also make sure we always have our fire extinguisher right next to it. We do pull the pin out so it is ready to go. And then we're going to light this on fire. That burns off all of our rubbing alcohol. And it leaves the coolest design. We also do this on tiles. So on our, our tile coasters, this is another, another design that we'll do. It, it's really quick. It doesn't take very long. I'm gonna get a white sheet of paper because I want you to be able to see what this looks like. So, cause you can't really tell, right? But if I put a piece of paper behind it, you'll be able to see. Let's make sure it's all burned off. Do we get it? Oh, there's a little bit on the edge. Like I said, this is all a teacher job. Kids do their part and then we do ours. There we go. So it's all done. You can gently kind of lift it up. I see a little bit over here that's still wet. So we'll burn that off. We can also just soak it up. If you ever want to try this at home, you don't have to use the, the lighter. You could also just let it dry and it, and it works just as well. I'm going to get this corner right here. If the pools of, of rubbing alcohol don't connect, kind of some of the ones towards the edge don't actually burn off. Okay, here we go. Now it's all dry. I'm gonna move these so you can see better. You can see all our different swirls of color that are on there. So this is, this will actually go the other direction on top of the Zen Tangled artwork that your kids are doing. Okay. So that is how the ink works. I'm going to slide this back up so you guys can see. And you'll have kids that they nail it on the first time and they love their colors and they ooh and ah over it. And then you have ones that are like, mm, I don't really love that. Um, and they'll put more rubbing alcohol on it or they'll put more color on it or they'll wipe the whole thing clean and start over. So all of that is an option. Most of our kids will finish this step today they'll, or today, this week. They'll finish their their um, glass within one week. You'll have some that have to do it a few times and, and they don't finish it and that's okay because we can we can either do it next week, which is bigger bring a friend week, or we can do it as a makeup class. So it's not a problem. It doesn't take more than a few minutes. So alrighty. So that's what's going on in our multimedia classes, fundamentals classes, sewing classes, drawing classes. That's everybody. Let's talk housekeeping and then I'll let you guys go. Okay. So this is our last full week before Thanksgiving. That's why we're trying to get all the projects done. Next week, we know we're going to have a lot of absences because it is the week of Thanksgiving. Um, and it also is bring a friend week. So we try to do um, all of our projects and get them done before, before that fun stuff. So not this week, but next week is bring a friend week where everyone is invited to bring one friend to class and we will have creative stations set up. I had somebody message me and ask what that meant. So creative stations just means it's instructor's choice. They know their class best and what the kids will enjoy the best. So there might be a watercolor table. There might be a free paint table. There might be a table for beading. There might be a table for popsicle sticks and hot glue. There, It's just open invitations for them to create and enjoy the studio space. And so we'll set all that up. We'll also hang a splat wall and then the kids will get to throw paint at it. Um, we take pictures um, of them and their friends together. We take group pictures for the class and all the friends. It's like it's like coming to a little bit of a party. So it's just a party for to celebrate friendship and to celebrate the studio. So that's what we're doing um, the week of Thanksgiving during your class time. So if you normally come Mondays at 6.30, then you come Mondays at 6.30. If you normally come Tuesdays at 5, then you come Tuesday at 5, and it ends at your normal class time. Um, we do ask that you RSVP for your friend. So if you're bringing someone, if you've invited somebody and they're coming, we need to we need to get their name, their parents' contact information, um, and then we need to, we just need to know that they're coming. So there is a link. We'll put it um, in the email when we email this video out. Um, 
and it, it also came home on a handout the first week of classes. And if you need it, you can send me a message. Okay. Um, it's not a public link, so I'm not going to post it here. Our um, bring a friend week classes are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So those of you who are a Thursday class, you come on Wednesday during your normal class time. If you're normally Thursdays at 630, then you come Wednesday at 630. If you have questions about that, give me a holler. Okay. Um, our December classes begin November 29th. So Monday, November 29th, we're going to start the December curriculum and the December classes. So if you, um, and I will send email reminders, but if you're month to month and you're coming in December, then make sure you come the Monday after Thanksgiving, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, even though those are technically November. A lot of times we would take those days off because we'd say, oh, it's the fifth Monday and we would just start on the 1st of December. But because of the where the holidays fall, um, we want to try to get in four classes before Christmas. And we can do that if we start um, the 29th. So everybody, that way everybody can get done with their December curriculum and be all done before Christmas. Um, that's nice for our instructors because then the week after Christmas is winter break camps and we don't have to do winter break camps all day long and then regular classes in the evening. We can just be here during the day. So, and that gives us the, the evenings with our families during that week. Okay. Um, so December classes start the 29th and the 30th of November. And we will send email reminders and remind people of that as well. If you are month to month and you are not coming in December, just send me an email and let me know so I can turn off your auto billing. Um, and then you don't have to worry about that. And we will um, wish you a happy Thanksgiving and hope to see you in the new year. Okay. Um, speaking of the new year. So our second semester of classes, our January through May classes, um, are posted on the website. And you can see those. They're right off the main header. It says weekly art classes for kids. And um, you can read all about them. We didn't change the schedule at all. I think we just added stuff to it. So there are some additional classes, nothing new, just additional sessions of the same classes added. Some of our classes were full, so we added some new ones. Um, and those are posted, and you can take a look at that and plan your second semester. Registration for second semester begins 9 a.m. on Wednesday, December 1st. So mark your calendars. Um, you can sign up for the email reminders that we'll, we'll send out. Um, that's also on that web page for weekly classes. You can sign up to get an email reminder when we open registration. Um, it will open at 9 a.m. And so if you are typically in a class that is really, really popular, um, please don't don't wait too long to sign up for those. Okay? They will they will fill up very quickly. Um, you have the option with second semester registration to do month to month. So you can pay monthly or you have the option to do um, the full semester and save 15% on your tuition. So if you if you pay for five months of art classes, when you sign up for the semester, then you save 15% um, on your classes. You also, if you're in a multimedia or fundamentals class or a sewing class, um, you also qualify for Studio Club and all the goodies that comes with that. So if you don't know what Studio Club is and you want to um, learn more about that, again, the links are on the website and um, we would love to have you. There is a t-shirt promo on the first day. So if you sign up for a multimedia or fundamentals or a sewing class on December 1st um, and you pay for the whole semester, we've got a t-shirt for you that we will have for you on your first class in January. So Miss Sarah designed the t-shirt. You'll have to go check it out. It's on the website. So, um, And then the last thing I have for you is winter break art camps. Those are coming up um, again that week between Christmas and New Year's. We've got four days of art camps. They are individually registered for and individually priced. Um, sometimes we do th different things every year. Sometimes we've had it where you have to do the whole week with us. Um, this week we decided, or this year we decided we just break it down. Um, if you want to come one day, great. If you want to come two days, great. If you want to come all four days, that's fine too. Um, the other thing we did this year that we didn't do last year and we haven't done for a few years is we are offering mini camps. So for those younger um, preschool age kiddos that want to come for just a short camp day, um, they can come um, and, and be in the studio and do an abbreviated version of the larger camp. So they will be doing um, smaller, smaller projects on a smaller scale, um, but feel, still fitting with the same theme. There's a painting camp, a sculpture camp, a drawing camp, and a printmaking camp, which is um, the one I'm most excited about. So I hope that you are excited for those. So if you've got um, kiddos that want to join us in the studio for winter break, I'd recommend getting signed up for those fairly quickly. Um, we are about 50% full on them and we haven't done any marketing on it. So 
um, the marketing for those should start right around Thanksgiving. Um, and, and once we start running Facebook ads and setting marketing emails, it, it, they should fill pretty quickly. So just be aware um, that that will happen. If you are a current Studio Club member, when you register, make sure that you use your discount code so you can save 25% on those games. Okay. That's it. That's the last of my post-it. Done. All right, guys. Well, I'm looking forward to a great week this week and a great week next week for Bring a Friend Week. If anybody needs anything, the best way to reach me is with um, an email to our um, Orange Easel Art accounts or a Facebook message or an Instagram DM. Those are the best ways to reach me. If you call the studio, our phones are almost always on silent because I'm doing things like this or before this I taught online or our instructors are in our teaching classes. So there's never, hardly ever, anyone here just sitting by the phone to answer it. So you can you can call, um, and when we get a voice message, we will we will call you back. So I've got two messages I got to return this morning, but um, but it's not instantaneous. The best way to reach us, the fastest way to reach us, is with an email or a, a message to our social channels. So, all right. Well, have a wonderful rest of your week this week, and um, we'll chat again next Monday. And Hope you have a good one. I got to find my, there it is.